Welcome back to Studio Q. Um, today I'm talking to, uh, well, a regular of Bent TV over many years, having to do with the AIDS quilt and um, United We Dance, and that's what we're here to talk about today, the fifth anniversary of United We Dance. Welcome, Colin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a multicultural dance event. Would you describe it as that? Oh, that's a pretty good way of describing it. It is very multicultural and there's a lot of dance. And it's on the 15th of October? Yes, the 15th of October. At the, the market. market. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, oh, well, I call the good old market. Hotel, but yeah. You know, going there for too many years. <laughs> what actually brought about, what started this event? Well, if you go back about five years in time, things weren't uh, going too smoothly around the world with September 11, the Bali bombings, bombings cetera, all yeah. that uh, type of thing. And uh, it was an idea came up that we could put an event together which uh, brought together different parts of our own gay and lesbian community, the multicultural community, and uh, just all join together and, and have fun together in harmony and show the world. No racial tension. No that tension. Sort of thing. Just set an example mm. to say, well, we can get on, it can be done and uh, this is how you do it. And it's not just a multicultural event in that sense because otherwise it'd be free and it's not. It's ten dollars <laughs> to actually go to United We Dance but the money itself is going to the community. It's going straight back into the community and every year we have raised funds uh, which go straight back into the community. For instance, uh, recipients in the past have been yourselves. Ben, ben TV. TV, indeed. We've been um, very fortunate in prior years. Yes, and uh, Joy Melbourne have received funds in the past. So have uh, Positive Attitude, which was a, a, an AIDS support organisation. Um, and also the David Williams Fund have received money from us as well. And uh, this, this, year? this year the money is going uh, back to Joy Melbourne again to help with their equipment uh, appeal. Drive, yes. And uh, also going into each of the multicultural social groups, which um, is it, it like encompasses Greek the guys Greek, and all that sort of thing. Greek, yeah. Italian, Asian groups, Jewish groups, uh, both gay and lesbian groups uh, within those. So they'll all get a, a share. And entertainment on the night? Yes, a range of entertainment representing all corners of the globe. You just, any you've hints, got any hints, any clues? No, no, I'm not, I'm not, you have to come and find out. It's only $10 on the 15th of October. And tickets are available at the door. You don't, you don't need to uh, pre-buy tickets. You can get them at the door. And can I just add that the, the um, United We Dance is at the end of the AGMC conference this year. Which That's is right, the yes. Australian Gay and Lesbian Multicultural Council's conference. Uh, which was held two, the first one was held two years ago in 2004. And that's at the Northcote Town Hall. It's at Northcote Town Hall yeah. um, on the 13th, 14th and 15th of October and United We Dance um, is the very last part of the conference. So, But it's open to everybody. I should just quickly mention too, of course, that um, Colin has been heavily involved in the AIDS quilt over many, many years and you will have seen him here discussing that yeah. quite often and um, if any news is coming up, because I know it's a kind of a seasonal thing sometimes. Uh, I may have to come back and tell you some other breaking news which may happen because we're working on something rather big, uh, but I can't say anything at this stage. Oh gee, oh. Tempting, tempting, when the, when you turn everybody? the camera off, I I'll tell you. All right. <laughs> mm, can't wait now. Well, we're actually, we have run out of time. <laughs> Funny that, isn't it? You've been, you're on Studio Q and I'm here with Colin Christ and we've been talking about United We Dance, the multicultural dance event. It's on at the market at the on the 15th of October. Yes. It starts from 6.30 with DJ Sveta. Mm. And it's only $10, remember that. Thanks very much, Colin, for joining us. Thank you very much indeed. We'll see you again soon. And we'll be back after this to hear more on the AGMC Multicultural Conference. Hi, I'm Jo Mullins and you're on Bent TV Studio Q. Tonight I have with me Michael Barnett, who is a committee member of the AGMC. Uh, and with me I also have Naomi Barnett, who is Michael's mother and a panel speaker on the AGMC um, conference. Michael, can you first of all tell us a bit about what the AGMC is? The AGMC, the Australian Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, Transgender and Intersex and Queer Council is uh, an organisation that formed originally in 2003 for a conference but then 
We formalized the organization structure in 2005, so we've been around now for the best part of three years or so, um, to raise awareness within both the uh, GLBTIQ communities and also the wider multicultural communities about issues that help would help both sets of communities understand each other better and the issues faced within them, the families, the people, the realities. Can you tell us a bit about the 2006 AGMC conference? Well, yes. In 2004, we had our inaugural conference, our inaugural multicultural conference, which was a huge success. And it was decided that uh, we wouldn't have one immediately afterwards because it takes a huge amount of resources yeah. to pull off one conference in one year. Pulling off two in two years would be an almost impossibility for volunteers. But uh, a second conference, 2006, was scheduled and we um, have put in a lot of hours and weeks and months and years of our lives into this conference. Um, following on from the success of the 2004 conference, there were some uh, recommendations that came out of that conference. We had a, a launch of those recommendations May last year. Uh, and following on from that, we've put together this conference, hopefully bigger, better, and uh, to help promote discussion within the, the communities, the, the raise awareness at government level in education and health areas um, within um, all sorts of different areas of, of, of the wider community. You have speakers from a variety of backgrounds at the conference. You have academics, political activists, members of the GLBTI community, politicians, Judge, uh, Justice Michael Kirby, who is the conference aimed at? Well, it's it's aimed at all sectors, all all levels of the community within the health and education. Um, we're trying to make everybody aware of issues that face uh, people in the gay, lesbian, wider communities from a multicultural background, whether it be um, people in um, an Asian background or people from. Um, different faiths such as uh, Jewish people or Muslims, people who um, are just different to the average Aussie, you know, people who have something extra in their life that makes them different. Can you give us a bit of a rundown on some of the highlights of the conference? Well, yes, we, we, have, a, we have the launch for the conference on the Friday evening, Friday, October 13 at the North Town Hall, um, starting at 7.30pm. We'll have um, we're having Luke Gallagher MC the evening. That's one of our highlights. We've got uh, the Melbourne Gay and Lesbian Chorus and one of the local high schools doing a series of performances at the launch. We're having um, Mary Delahunty, the Honourable Mary Delahunty, speaking on behalf of the Minister for Multicultural Affairs, John Pandasopoulos, at the launch. Uh, we have a Human Rights Commissioner, Graeme Innes, at the launch. Uh, so the launch will be a really packed evening of entertainment, uh, some speeches, and there'll be some fantastic food, as all people from multicultural backgrounds know, food is the essence of life. Naomi, can you tell us a bit about uh, your involvement in the conference? What was it that you felt was really important that made you get involved? I feel the conference has a very important role to offer people who need support and need information and I was invited to be on the panel and I felt I had um, something to say. I am the parent of a gay child and there are lots of us out there and uh, I was honoured to be invited. What will be um, the main message that you want to communicate through the conference? That your child hasn't committed any crime by being gay. Michael, can you tell us, uh, give us a bit of a rundown on some of the highlights of the conference? Well, there'll be a number of highlights. One of them is the video link or video recording from Ju Justice Michael Kirby of the High Court of the High Court of Australia, which is a, a real fantastic bonus for the conference. We're having panels, a hypothetical being led by Anton Enos from the SBS News team. Mm -hmm. He's a very uh, interesting speaker who was at our previous conference. We've got a panel for parents and. Uh, people who are uh, supporting uh, gay people, gay and lesbian, transgender, bisexual people from PFLAG. My mother is one of the highlights of the conference. She'll be on the panel. We've got um, the rabbi, uh, Jonathan Karen Black, coming to speak on the religious panel. And there'll be uh, other 
people involved with religious areas there too. Uh, in terms of sessions that cover issues facing transgendered people, can you give us an idea of what sort of things will be looked at? We have one very exciting speaker who is returning after having presented at our 2004 conference. Juan will be speaking T in GLBTI, Trans Inclusion or Token Minority is the name of the paper that's being presented. Uh, Michael, can you tell us what you hope will be some of the outcomes of the conference? Ideally, it would be fantastic if we could get a write-up in every multicultural newspaper around the state and around the country. Uh, within uh, the multicultural community, it's hard to get any awareness raised so far, but it's hopefully something that this conference will address. Hopefully we'll get uh, greater exposure of people in GLBTIQ situations in the wider multicultural community. That would be great. I'd like to see the wider media pick up the, the uh, conference and ex and point out to people that there are many issues involving people in, from multicultural and ethnic and uh, gay and lesbian and backgrounds who need a lot of support, a lot of advice and um, funding. And it would be wonderful to achieve a broad outcome from this conference. When is the conference and how do people register? Conference is this coming weekend, October 13 through 15. People can go to our secure online registration page at www.agmc.org.au or they can call 0431 432 412 and leave a message or speak to Chinzi, our president. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Naomi. It's been fabulous to talk to you both. I hope the conference goes very well and I wish you both every success with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned for more Studio Q after the break. And now part two of our chat with Australian TV icon, John Orchick, on his career post number 96. Subsequent to number 96, you moved on. You, you established quite a long relationship with Crawfords, didn't you? Going into, well, Cop Shop later on, but... I did beforehand even. I did a lot of those homicides in Division 4s and Matlock Police and Blueys, all as guests, and guest baddies in The that. Sullivans as well. I... And the Sullivans, I played an Irish priest, which was a yes, lot of fun. Yes, I'd think that, Father Mulcahy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember coming down to do that and I thought, um, right, I've got to be a bit different here, you know. So I thought, I oh, know, I'll put a red rinse through my hair. Oh, right. It didn't work. Didn't work. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't remember you being a red in no, it. <laughs> it didn't work. So I thought, oh, give it up. It just played as it did. So you got away all right playing an Irishman? Yeah, I yeah. loved it. It was a fantastic time. Because you're actually of Hungarian extraction, aren't you? Uh, I, I assume that, thanks to Mike Georgi on Cop Shop, you're mistaken most often for a Greek. Oh, the entire country still thinks yeah, I'm Greek. Yeah, yeah. Do you, um, have you ever actually gotten to play a Hungarian character? In yes, all the, you did? once. In probably what I would consider some of the most, oh, for me, oops, Mike, I should know better than Mike that. I should know up. better than that. <laughs> um, to me, one of the most rewarding things I've ever done, and that was a, a telly movie for the ABC called Displaced Persons. Oh, yes, That yes. Louis Nara had written. Mm -hmm. And in that I play a Hungarian Jewish scholar. Right which was totally the opposite end of the scale to what I've been usually playing. Mm. And in that, I spoke very little English and mainly Hungarian. Wow. And I found that very difficult. Really? Are you, like, are you fluent in Hungarian? I was. Outside, yeah. I was then fairly fluent, mm. pretty fluent, really. But what I realised is that when you're playing somebody, oh, not in another character necessarily, but in another language, you start to think in that language. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. I normally began to think in that language when I was speaking to my mother mm. or to various other Hungarians that were friends and rels and whatever. Mm. But to actually play that, right. it was an anathema. Really? Yeah. And I went, ah, it took a while for me to adjust having to do Hungarian dialogue opposite people that were speaking English to me. Yeah. Like I'm Johnny sure. Wood was in that too. All oh, right, okay. Um, I was a terrific cast. So is that probably, in terms of the roles you've done, um, is that been the most stretching for you, do you think? Uh, yeah, to a degree. I don't mm. know if it's stretching so much, but certainly one I enjoyed playing, mm. really cast outside myself. Yeah, definitely. I so. mean, has there been enough variety throughout your career, or is there something you, you felt you would have liked to have done that you haven't had the chance to yet? A lot. Yeah? A lot. I think we end up dying thinking oh. there's so much we could have done. Mm. <laughs> but no, there is a lot I'd like to do. I am doing. Yep. Not uh, too late. In bits and pieces <laughs> before it's too late. And 
Michael Caine said that. Mm. I remember seeing him interviewed on Parkinson and uh, someone said, oh, you've had so many lifetime achievement awards. He says, yeah, he says, I'll keep telling him I'm still working. Still here, yeah. <laughs> 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 Which is very true. So, yeah, there is a lot. That was lovely. Now I get to play different kinds of characters. Mm. It's no longer the bloke that jumps over the fence and chases the baddie. So is there Thank more, God. perhaps, satisfaction in more mature characters? now? You're there is. A, yeah? There is, as an actor. But also directing. I love directing stuff mm. and, and teaching. But the... Well, I'm, next year, for example, I'm going to do Duet for One with Madeleine West. Mm -hmm. And in that, I'm playing a German psychiatrist. Ah, so it's the whole thing is spoken with a German accent, you see. So you don't have to go the whole German hog, it's just the, the accent. The accent the thing. Accent. Oh, I'll probably play around with it. <laughs> probably get some blue contacts. And Beautiful. Stuff like that. So we'll look out for that one, yeah? yeah Coming up in March, here in Melbourne. In March next year here in Melbourne at St Martins. But I don't have specific dates yet. Beautiful. Well, we'll, we'll look out. I'll keep them posted for you. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, in terms of uh, moving ahead with, with Crawfords and what have you, mm -hmm. you moved on to Cop Shop, of course and um, met your future-to-be wife, Paula Duncan. The lovely the set. Paula. Yes. Um, she's on record as saying um, that, you know, she got into cop shop, enjoyed it, harmonious, great family atmosphere. Then this big ladies' man came on set. <laughs> and for the first time, there was tension on the set because of this overconfident, gorgeous yeah. fellow. What, yeah, were you overconfident and was there tension? And if so... The only tension that existed on that set, believe me, was sexual. Sexual, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wondered about that. There was, there was no other real tension. We were, in fact, almost... It was one of those remarkable shows mm. where almost everybody they cast fitted into a harmonious slot Oh. with everybody else who was there. Yep. Now that happens very rarely because mm. there's usually someone you go, oh God, a I don't know her, <laughs> pain in the butt. Yeah. I don't think I was a pain in the butt. I may have been. Not that you meant to be. Not it was that just I meant to be. perception yeah. on their part. And Paula was a lot more reserved than I was. Um, and did you find out subsequently that that was because, you know, she had the hots for you as well? <laughs> I did find that <laughs> yeah. out, yeah. Yeah. No, she hated being confronted. Ah, uh, well, don't we all? Yeah. You know, yeah. Like someone says something and you go, you know, you really only say that to me because you really want to take me to bed. <laughs> and she goes, no, I don't. You're the last person in the world. Mm. Go, okay, we'll see. Sure. Yeah. That's probably sure. what she meant by arrogance. But that was also a line, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make someone dislike you. Of course. And then they think about you a lot. And the more they think about it, suddenly it all turns around. Of course. It's an age-old tactic, isn't it? That's really good. I was always a... Uh, what's the word? Um, oh, God, I can't think of it. Someone who... A tactician. Oh, of course, yes. <laughs> it yes. was a tactic. Of course. And it worked. So you obviously hadn't come across Paula in the number 96 days, because I don't think you missed each other no, by I that much, did no, you? No, we didn't miss each other. I knew Carmen, I knew her sister yep. quite well. We'd worked together before. Mm. And I met Paula once in the theatre mm -hmm. when at the old Nimrod in Sydney when I went to see a show there. Yeah. And with uh, she was with Carmen and I met her briefly, and that's the story I'd say about her walking out with a nose in the air. <laughs> and because uh, she went, hi, hi, hello. Oh, bless her. And I went, oh, hello. Up you, dear. She, uh, Paula, wrote a book about your family oh, yes. situation, the mother of my son. That's right. Um, which is a pretty no holds barred look at your, your relationship and your former relationships and what have you. Were you, when she uh, came to you with this idea, were you, what did you think? I said to her, how much are they paying you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 are they giving you an advance or are you doing all this work and hoping for two dollars a copy mm. and basically no it didn't worry me okay mm. see i don't think that if you're concerned with skeletons in your life mm. and things that you've done sooner or later someone's going to rattle the cupboard anyway yeah exactly however if you say it and do it and provided it's truthful and it's not gutter press or yep. sensationalised there or whatever, nothing there's nothing anyone, anyone can ever come back to you about. Exactly. So I said, tell it as you see it. Mm. She said, I'll let you read it before it goes. And if there's anything you want to cut out of it, cut out of it, which she did with her and Maggie. And there was nothing I wanted to cut out. I said, in fact, I think you've made me a nicer guy than I really am. Now for yourself these days, you run a talent school right here in Melbourne, TAFTA. TAFTA, the Australian Film and Television Academy is what it stands for. So 
you said before you have about you have about 180 students probably yeah, going through yeah, absolutely. per year. Um, do you get a sense that most of them are optimistic that they will make it and as in a career of full-time acting? And are you optimistic for them for their on their behalf? I'm not optimistic for them. Mm. Um, Although these days, opportunities change a lot. Clayton Watson, who was one of my students, who was on Always, Always Greener, Greener yep. and the two, um, what were those two, two um, uh, I can't thingo think movies, they, they made them back to back and shot them here, and then they took him around the world to promote Weren't them. Weren't they sci-fi uh, type yeah, things or something like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he's in, he's in America now, yeah. and he's got an agent, a manager, and all the rest of it, and mm. so he's going to be going places. and. He would. Once upon a time, the work here is never enough to sustain. No, and it isn't now. <clears throat> it never used to be. We're too small. If you're lucky enough to be successful in a movie in Australia, mm. or that movie even reasonably successful, the chances of you being picked up for a picture in America are very, Grand very high. Best, yeah. Very high. See, these didn't <clears throat> exist in the early cop shop days. No. Those opportunities. No. But now, so yes, the limited opportunity in Australia is the same. Mm. But when now we target our career a little bit differently. And I, I now quite deliberately say, yes, do your study here, try and get gigs here, go to the States. Well, Aussies are the flavour of the month over there, oh, aren't huge. they? They're really well huge. regarded. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. I was over there in February and it was just amazing. Mm. Oh, you're from Australia. Oh, oh well. how are you, honey? <laughs> You, you were a writer as well, weren't you? Didn't I did. you write some I Prisoner? I wrote four episodes. I wrote, oh, about 11 episodes of Prisoner. Yeah. And uh, I wrote about four episodes of Cop Shop and mm -hmm. a whole lot of other stuff as well. Did you have, did you hold any script conferences with, like, say, the Prisoner cast, for example? And, no, um, they didn't like me talking to the cast. Really? They don't like writers talking to the cast. Because, because why? The At that time, uh, I, I guess because actors all bitch. <laughs> you know, they go, oh, look, my character would do this, that's that, and that's a load of this, and that's a load of that. When are you going to give me something? And something they also the writer's yeah. going to get accosted by the actors. The truth to me was, of course, mm. that I knew all these guys. Yeah. I knew them as actors. And you could write for them as and actors. Could, exactly. And, yeah. and I knew what their timing was like. I used to get into trouble with my, with my writing. They'd say, oh, you haven't put enough big print in. <laughs> like instructions to the actor. So uh, I don't think Maggie needs an instruction. She knows how to play this line. Yeah, she's a, she's a, she's a professional. She you knows know, her character exactly. Yeah. And they go, oh no no. I thought oh, she doesn't need to be told. And of course you see Maggie. And she's you know one of the things that bug me. They're trying to tell me how to play the bloody line or. I'll go against that, <laughs> which she does. So, ostensibly, it was to protect you from actors bitching, but, you know. But, at the yeah. same time. But I loved it. I loved having a chat to them and, and, and listening. You don't have much control over the storylines because mm. they're kind of done elsewhere. You've got to understand, you know, like a soap is a, is, is, is a machine. It's, yeah. a, it's a factory oh, yeah. where this out. happens here, that happens there, that happens somewhere else. Mm. So you've got the story department here, mm. the story department, the script department here. Now the actual script has got nothing to do with the story department. Yeah. They communicate, but these people write the scripts, these people think up of the stories the actual, where the scripts yeah. are going to come from. Yeah. And so it moves on down into its various compartments. Mm. So... Well, are you doing any writing currently? Or I am you... actually writing, and I have been for a few months, and it's going to take me a few more months yet, maybe even a year. I'm writing a film um, called uh, Crimes, mm -hmm. and it's about a 10-year era here in Victoria of the Crime Car Squad right. that were formed. And in that 10 years, that was just they were amazing. So this is a hypothetical thing but based on true stories okay. so it's a movie of one particular squad that existed there then wow um, so when can we hope to see something well it's that? at the moment i'm looking at it and i'm thinking my god this is going to cost a lot of money <laughs> um i guess when i finish the script and then i'll pitch it Beautiful. and and see what happens and hopefully someone will pick it up i would like eric banner for example to play the lead role in it because Yay. it would be right up his alley fantastic um, and he's doing well for himself isn't he he's doing very well hulk yeah. very well very well you've had a few reunions on that lately haven't you we've television a, reunions uh, yeah, that, <laughs> fantastic we had a great time and linda stoner said it all on that night yeah um right at the very end. she didn't know she's saying it you know she left the show for a year and then came back in the last year of the show mm -hmm. And I think Koshi asked her a question and said, and um, what did you feel about it when it all finally folded? And mm. she said, 
Oh, well, it didn't really matter anymore because by then we'd done everything and everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like number 96 to me. It was very much like number 96. Well, on that note, we'll say thank you so much again for it's coming in. It's a pleasure, in. thank you. And get it, the DVD. It's from Umbrella Entertainment. Great new, oh, well, not so new now, but great label locally who are releasing some great stuff. Cult stuff, Australian stuff. Fantastic. British stuff, the whole lot. And John's on there doing for it in his great city. I am. And have a look at tafta.com.au. That's it. For the school. Beautiful. Thanks so much, John. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we will see you soon in Studio Q with something fabulous.